You know, in our book, The Great Cholesterol Myth, Dr. Johnny Bodie and I exposed this myth. We looked at the history. For example, there was this study called the Seven Countries Study, when Ansel Keys cherry-picked the data showing that countries with higher cholesterol had more heart problems. And when you cherry-pick the data, it makes sense. But look, let me give you an example. He left the island of Crete out in the Mediterranean. Now, the average cholesterol for an inhabitant of Crete was over 200, but they didn't have any heart problems there for even a decade. Now, think about that. Over 100, no heart problems. Something doesn't make sense. And there were other countries as well. It just didn't fit. What I want to talk about today is don't fear cholesterol number, folks. Look, it's only a number. And cholesterol does a lot of great things for the body. And I also want to reassure you that what you put in your mouth, saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, you know, healthy fats, omega-3 fats, they're not to be vilified. They're good for you. Eggs are good for you. An organic egg once a day is great for you. Coconuts are saturated fat. That's good for you. But why did saturated fats get vilified? Because they got turned into cholesterol in the body. And if cholesterol is the bad guy, well, then we've got to throw out those fats. And then we went on these low-fat diets. And then guess what happened with that? People were gaining weight. Hey, they even developed heart problems later on in life. Something's wrong with the low-fat diet, especially if you combine it with these, you know, carbs, that, these sugary carbs that create inflammation in the body. There's been an incredible leap over the last four or five decades. When I was a young doctor, I really bought the fact that cholesterol and heart problems, you know, went hand in hand. In fact, I was a choir boy for cholesterol. When I was chief of cardiology at my institution in Connecticut, I used to lecture for the drug companies. Why? Because I believed that cholesterol and heart problems were so entrenched that I wanted to teach other doctors. But guess what? Something happened in 1993 that changed my whole opinion on statin drugs. There was a research article that came out showing that coenzyme Q10, like cholesterol, was severely depleted by statin drugs. Didn't make any sense, folks. How could the most vital nutrient for the heart be knocked out of the box? The heart requires CoQ10 for survival. I started to question. It didn't make any sense. And around that time, I was doing the angiograms anyway. And I wasn't seeing a correlation of heart problems with higher cholesterol. Something had to give. I started reading more and more. And studies came out. They were showing positive impacts of statin drugs on heart health. But a lot of it was sort of statistical gymnastics. They were talking about relative risk and absolute risk. It was a hodgepodge. And when Dr. Johnny Bowden and I wrote the book, The Great Cholesterol Myth, dozens of doctors were on our side. They saw the light too. So it wasn't just, you know, our myth-busting situation about cholesterol. Now it's becoming more and more mainstream. So cholesterol is not the villain of heart health. Cholesterol does a lot of great things in the body.